What we're gonna do in this video is take a look at one of Cinema 4D's newest features that just came out in 2023.2, uh, and that's the ability to use vertex maps with balloons or the balloon property in soft body dynamics. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here is the end result of what we're gonna be trying to achieve today, taking our objects and making it so we can inflate them and deflate them using a field and a vertex map, which is the new part of this, like I mentioned. So let's go ahead and see how we do this. So here's that same file, just obviously the beginning of it. I do wanna point out for the letter M here, what you're not seeing is that I did put a text object in a volume builder uh, followed by a volume mesher and then a remesh uh, in order to create something that has some nice even polygons on it and also a nice rounded edge. So by no means the only way to do this, just the way I went with and wanted to uh, make sure I showed that to everybody. Um, and then the first thing we're gonna do here is start by selecting our objects, right clicking, going to the simulation tags and choosing balloon. Now in reality, all this did is add a cloth tag um, and enable the balloon property. And at this point, if we just hit play, um, what we should see is everything just kind of falls through the ground because we don't have anything for these objects to interact or collide with. So now what we're gonna do is select the disc, go to simulation tags again, and this time choose collider. And that way our objects will collide with this and we can already see we get some balloon like behavior here. I also want to point out that the number of polygons we have does change the way uh, this simulation works and the more polygons you have the more kind of natural realistic the more detail you're going to get here. Um, now the M is already an editable object so it would be a little bit tricky to add more polygons to that though I could just use the subdivide command. Um, the sphere and torus here are primitives. So if I want to add more segments to them to maybe get some more deformation, some more detail, I can do that quite easily. Now, the trick here and what is new uh, is this map section in the balloon property. There were ways to do this previously. Um, it involved you know, either the surface or even the soft body section to um, do something like this. But the balloon um, option is going to be uh, simpler and give you, I think, better results. So in order to use this map property, we need to create a vertex map. And what we can do is select all three of our elements at once, right click on them, go to other tags and choose vertex map. Now the M is gonna be a little bit different because it's an editable object. So what we need to do is check use fields and then delete the freeze. Whereas on the objects that are still primitives, um, we don't have that freeze and we don't need to check use fields on. Okay. The next step is to assign this map that we just created. And we can do that by just dragging it in here. Now, technically I can do this all at once um, because these objects or these vertex maps have the same name. Um, though I'm not sure I recommend it. That is what I'm gonna be doing here just for time purposes. But in reality, you would probably wanna select one um, cloth tag make sure you're in the balloon section and then drag the corresponding vertex map from that object into the map section. And now when we hit play, you will see really nothing has changed, okay? Uh, in fact, one of the things we should do to this is probably inflate this because right now it's kind of deflating though really I'm not sure the balloon is make, having properties having too much of an impact on that. It's really just the, the cloth properties at this point. So in order to make this look like a balloon, we need to add some overpressure. And so I'll add something in the neighborhood of about two. And we can see that that doesn't change anything right now. And that is because we've added this map and the uh, values of this map are set to zero. If we were just to really quickly add an invert here, okay, oh, that's not having the desired effect. So that won't show us that. Um, if I was just to quickly delete the vertex maps, you would see we do get this kind of inflating. And that's the whole point of using this balloon property. Um, and this is what we have at the moment. So I'll turn off the shading now because don't really need it. But yeah, this is, you know, our objects with balloons. Once again, the more geometry, the more detail. Let's add those vertex maps back in. See everything deflates. And what we're gonna do to control this vertex map, and you could do this in a number of different ways, um, but I'm gonna just use a field like we saw at the beginning. 
And what's nice is I can use the same field or different fields for each of these vertex maps. So if you wanted to, you could select each vertex map, create a different field, but I could also just use reuse the same field in all three of these vertex maps. And I'll make sure that's no longer a child. And you can now see if I select all three of those vertex maps and then my linear field that we're able to use one linear field to control multiple vertex maps. And even that's kind of a cool uh, thing if you've ever um, needed to do that before because vertex maps can be used in so many different places, whether it is dynamics, um, really anywhere you can use fields, you can also use vertex maps, uh, you name it. So, all right, let's see what we get. Well, if we move our field to the left here, we're gonna see our objects do their normal inflate. But now as I move this to the left, we're gonna see them deflate. Now the way they deflate, how much they deflate, and if we get any issues, um, can come down to a variety of different things. So I wanna go over some ways to kind of, um, you know, do your, make this as good as you can. The first is making this field larger will allow that transition to happen over a longer amount of time. And that can kind of get rid of some of the issues we have. Also the speed at which we move it. Okay, you can see that kind of worked here on that blue object, so that's uh, nice. You can also see that um, our torus here really isn't doing too much deflating, and that could just be because it's shape and some of the other properties. Let's see what we get if we just increase our segments a little bit. Um, I suspect we'll get, okay, well, there we go. All right, so our linear field now does a much better job of inflating and deflating. And, what I'm actually not seeing here that I've seen in other times I've done this is that, um, let's turn this down the torus a little bit so we don't get quite as much of a slowdown, um, is things kind of tend to drift away, move a little bit as you kind of go back and forth. You know, maybe we can see that if I do this a few times, things seem to be looking pretty good uh, with that. But there are a couple of things you can do to, to kind of help change that if that is something you're getting because um, yeah, I, I don't know why um, it's not happening like it has every other time, but just in case it does in yours. Um, working with the mix animation is one way you can do this. Um, this will have it rely more on um, the pins, uh, which does typically mean, um, you know, we're going to get less of this, right? So uh, this is helping it hold its structure, hold it in place a little bit. As you go lower, you will start to see more of that. Um, deflation happen, but it doesn't happen, um, you know, quite as much. And in fact, it almost looks like, yeah, it's just happening on that one um, object, which is really strange. So getting a few weird things I'm not used to seeing or wouldn't expect to see, but that is fine. Okay. All right. That's fun. Uh, but this can be one way to help kind of calm down if things are moving around too much. Another way I found to do this is to use um, a force and that force is friction it just seems to slow things down a bit and you can increase the strength um, as much or as little as you want there um, but yeah now we can kind of slow this down a little bit speed it up and do whatever we need to with it and things do typically stay put a little bit better with friction you could also try um, just increasing the friction in the cloth tag. I haven't had quite as much success with that, but that's definitely something you could um, work with there. So that's kind of the gist of it, but I want to take this just a little bit further. And if you're looking at your objects and you're going, okay, even though I've turned up the amount of polygons, sometimes when they deflate, we get, you know, uh, some fong breaking or some hard edges. What you can do is then take all of these objects, okay, and put, say, a null in a um, subdivision surface, and that will round things out a bit more, okay? You can see it definitely slows things down a little, but ultimately, if you've cached this, then that shouldn't really be as big of a concern, okay? And that is really just a good tip in general when working with cloth to add more detail to your simulations without it having to simulate um, those additional polygons. Okay, so it just smooths everything out a little bit more. Um, and that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. And until next time, take care.